Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use top toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from Diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, Ingredients, formulations, the longevity products, business, a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, and we'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour, as we always do. We'll try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products or sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team for a one-time $25 fee, you can start a longevity business. Call 866-735-2470. 866-735-2470 for more information. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off our website. It's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We've got news stories and blog posts and videos and lots of good health information as well as all the longevity products up at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And you can join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites as well for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business for yourself for an all the benefits associated with having your own business, having your own business, helping helping really change people's lives at a, the most fundamental level there is, the level of their health. It's a rare person that doesn't get benefit, dramatic benefits sometimes, very noticeable benefits from getting on a nutritional supplement program, particularly folks who have never been on a supplement program. That's one of the great things about the human body is the more deficient we are in the B vitamins and electrolytes and our omega-6 fatty acids and magnesium and other minerals, the more deficient we are, the faster our body absorbs those nutrients. And this accounts for the really quick turnarounds people make in their health when they get on a nutritional supplement program, especially if they've never been on a supplement program, which is most people. Now, if you're in business, you're going to help well, in the business of providing these supplements, you're going to help a lot of people. And this is why longevity has been around for so long and is still growing and growing pretty darn quickly. Because nutritional supplementation can change people's lives at the most fundamental level there is, the level of their health. And if this sounds good to you. If you want to be in business helping change people's lives this way, please call 866-735-2470 or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, welcome back to the Brightside. We were talking about the magical, mysterious, metaphysical pineal gland that all religions throughout history have recognized and honored in art and statues and religious iconography of all kinds for really thousands of years. There are uh, stone texts from Sumeria that have pictures of a, pine, of a pine cone, the pine cone being the symbol for the pineal gland. So what is it about this pineal gland that makes it so special? Well, what does the pineal gland do? It's really a mysterious gland. You don't hear much about it in medicine, aside from the occasional pineal cyst that occurs rarely. You don't hear much about it from doctors. There's no pinealectomies or where they remove the pineal gland. There's no pineal gland cancers that I know of. 
So what is it exactly about? What is the, what is the thing? What is going on here with the pineal gland? What makes it so special? Well, what the pineal gland does is it distinguishes the, the two major components of our lives, daytime and nighttime. Day and night are the major distinctions of our human existence, day and night. And day and night cycles in the body, uh, the body's chemistry is tied into day-night cycles. It's called the circadian rhythm. And the circadian rhythm is basically things go up in the daytime, they go down in the nighttime, and they kind of fluctuate. And we, our biological and, and, and biochemical and behavioral activities change in the daytime and the nighttime based on how our, bi our biochemistry is responding to day and night. And this whole biochemistry sensing regulation is controlled by the pineal gland. And this is what makes it so magical and so metaphysical. It kind of divides, you know, if you, if you divide lifetime, our, our human existence on planet Earth into daytime and nighttime, you can divide human existence into different polarities likewise, like good and evil, left and right, up and down. So the pineal gland has always been recognized as the gland that distinguishes the poles, the major, the major uh, way we look at the world, through poles, through up and down, light and dark, left and right, good and bad. And the pineal gland is symbolic of this, dis of this distinction. In the body, it tells us when it's time to sleep, it tells us when it's time to wake up, it tells us when it's time to eat, it tells us when it's time to procreate, it tells us when it's time to grow, it tells us when it's uh, time to not grow. It regulates the basic polarities of human existence. This, po uh, this is uh, uh, manifested by what's called the circadian clock or the circadian rhythm. Anything that disrupts circadian rhythms will dramatically affect our health. Anything that affects our light day cycles will dramatically affect our health and cause every single disease you can name. Everyone from cancer to heart disease to acne to psoriasis, whatever. It can all be affected by disruptions in the circadian rhythm. And guess what? Over the last 150 years, that is exactly what we've done as a culture and a society through electrification, through lights, through lighting. This is uh, talked about, this is uh, described really comprehensively in the book Lights Out by T.S. Wiley. Very interesting book that didn't get a lot of publicity, but it's really very good. Really interesting science and, and a really interesting hypothesis. T.S. Wiley, W-I-L-E-Y, Wiley. She discusses the relationship between our health issues, modern health issues like metabolic syndrome, which is really everything in terms of disease, obesity, insomnia, sleep apnea, depression. She describes the link between all of these health challenges and our modern, well-lit lifestyle. According to Wiley, electrification in the form of 24-hour light lighting is, quote, the biggest change human beings have lived through the last 10,000 years, unquote. And she's absolutely correct. Probably next to cooking, next to heat, uh, next to fire, and then cooking, there's been no more significant change in human, uh, in how we operate in the world since we began more than 10,000 years ago, probably 500,000 or even a million years ago. In my opinion, a case could be made that electricity and lighting, which comes along with electricity, it was the first thing really that we did in a big way, was create lights. In my opinion, it's uh, from an evolutionary perspective, it is the biggest change human beings have gone through. Period. Sin maybe since fire, but certainly right up there. Remember, the most fundamental aspect of our biochemistry is this circadian rhythm, this 24-hour rhythm. It's the master control of the secretion of all of our hormones, of our melatonin, of our serotonin, of our cortisol, of our estrogen, of our progesterone, of our testosterone. Most importantly, maybe of our insulin. Insulin is arguably the most important hormone in the body arguably, and day, uh, uh, daylight and the circadian rhythm dramatically affects insulin levels. And this is why metabolic syndrome, which is the number one health challenge that we deal with as human beings, metabolic syndrome, blood, blood sugar, messed up blood sugar leading to every disease there is, this is why the relationship between sunlight and, and insulin is why metabolic syndrome and electrical lighting are so, so, so significant when it comes to the health challenges that we're dealing with. We'll talk about this relationship between light and biochemistry and light and disease. When we come back on the Bright Side, got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to the Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we 
are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We have lines open for you at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, hypothyroidism, fluoride, iodine, things we've been speaking about in the past couple of days, carbohydrate metabolism, diabetes. How do you like that? Diabetes may be a solar-related disease via this uh, relationship between insulin uh, between insulin and sunlight, insulin being a sunlight hormone. Ins insulin's amazing stuff. Oh my gosh. We know of insulin for di as an uh, anti-diabetic hormone, but really insulin is a metabolic, it's a building hormone. And it's somewhat regulated by the 24-hour circadian rhythm that controls cortisol and serotonin and estrogen and testosterone and other hormones as well. There is a major relationship between the sun biochemistry, specifically carbohydrate metabolism, and also insulin. The sun is involved in all the energy processing of the body, carbohydrates and insulin obviously being key players in energy, in biochemical energy. For most of human evolutionary history, long hours of daylight in the summertime meant bodybuilding. It was time to build. It was time to grow. It was time, time to repair. It was time to uh, procreate. Because of the relative abundance of food in the summer, the body evolved to grow when there were longer periods of daylight. And so you secrete biochemistry of building when there's lots of light. Vitamin D is produced from the reaction of sunlight with skin cholesterol. Serotonin is the quintessential light time hormone. Serotonin is literally produced by light. It, it's activated by light. Light acts, acts as a catalyst to initiate the production of serotonin. The activity of serotonin is also affected by cholesterol, another major building, growth, and repair substance, and summertime substance. Serotonin doesn't have the same potency to activate cells. It doesn't have the same ability to activate cells when you don't have a lot of cholesterol. Tell that to the next doctor who wants to give you a statin drug to poison your cholesterol-lowering system. This accounts partially, at least, for some of the mood problems that uh, patients on statin drugs can, can experience. Also, it's, uh, some of the digestive problems. Serotonin is also a digestive health uh, hormone. You see the interplay with all of these things. This is why you can't just monkey around with your hormone system. And statin drugs, by the way, even though they're not hormone drugs, they're, they monkey around with the hormone system. According to research that was reported in the April 2000 edition of the Journal of Psychiatry and Neuroscience, the potentizing effect of cholesterol on serotonin, the, the strengthening effect that cholesterol has on serotonin, is about fluidity of the cell membranes. Cholesterol is important for cell membranes to have a certain fluidity, of a, a flowing nature. Without that flowing nature on the membrane, when the membrane becomes too stiff because there's not enough cholesterol, our hormones don't work as effectively. Again, underlying, highlighting the stupidity of poisoning the cholesterol produce, per, uh, manufacturing system. You need cholesterol for fluidity of the membrane so all the hormones work better. Hormones working by an interaction between the membrane, the cell membrane, and the, uh, and the hormone itself. So you can't just take, sometimes you'll have a deficiency, you'll have a functional deficiency in estrogen, right? So, say you have, your, your, uh, your body's not acting as estrogenic as you might want it to be. Say you're not as fertile or your libido is, is low or you have other issues associated with low estrogen and you, they put you on estrogen replacement therapy. But the problem isn't that you're not making enough estrogen. The problem is that the estrogen isn't working on the cell membrane effectively. This is why hormone replacement therapy can be so problematic. You can't just put hormones into the body and expect to have changes, uh, to expect to have beneficial changes because how a hormone works depends on cholesterol. It depends on the membrane. It depends on the cell itself. Cholesterol is a major building substance, by the way. It's related to insulin, again, showing you the interplay with all of these things. When insulin goes up, so will your, so will your cholesterol. This is such an important point. When insulin goes up, so does cholesterol. Why is this important? Because how many of us are being dosed with statin drugs when the problem isn't cholesterol? It's insulin. And why does insulin go up? Because of insulin resistance secondary to a poor diet and also to a dis disturbed digestive system. It all comes back to the triangle of disease. Cardiologists will point to the relationship between elevated cholesterol and heart disease. They'll say, oh, well, we know if you have high levels of LDL or low levels of LDL, you have high risk for heart disease. But yet, even th though they point to this relationship, there's no definitive evidence that statin drugs can help uh, improve longevity after you have heart disease. 
there seems to be a disconnect here. You can lower your cholesterol and not necessarily have a long life following heart disease. What is this dis disconnect due to? The disconnect is due to the misunderstanding between uh, around what's causing the problem. It's not the cholesterol, it's the insulin, which is causing the, the cholesterol to go up. This is why lowering your blood sugar, number one, and using nutrients that help your body process sugar are your major, should be, your major strategies for dealing with cardiovascular disease. It is not about statinization. Statinization doesn't serve the public. It serves the companies that make the statin drugs who are reaping in multi-billions, tens of billions, maybe hundreds of billions of dollars worldwide in statin drugs. You think they're going to tell you that it's not the statin drug, that it's not the cholesterol, that it's the insulin? Can you imagine drug companies that are making hundreds of billions of dollars all of a sudden saying, you know what, it really isn't the cholesterol, it's the insulin. Do you think you're going to hear that? You're never going to hear that. There is so much vested interest in making sure that this cholesterol hypothesis, this nonsensical cholesterol hypothesis for heart disease doesn't go away. If you're on a statin drug, you've been hoodwinked, period. If you're on a statin drug, you have been hoodwinked. And I, I, I don't mean to be harsh, and I don't mean to be mean, because, you know, we're only doing what our doctors told us to do. So it's not necessarily our fault. But the fact is, the, sheep, the wool's been pulled over our eyes. So cholesterol is not only not the cause of heart disease, elevated cholesterol. It's a growth substance. It's a repair substance. When we're, we, we produce more cholesterol when we're growing, when we're repairing, when we're under duress. Post-surgery, if you're an athlete. All of the ways that we, our body handles duress and handles stress and handles physiologic stress as well as psychological stress involve the hormone cholesterol. And of course, insulin as well. When insulin goes up, cortisol goes up. Cortisol, like serotonin, helps the body handle life. Cortisol, like serotonin, are life management hormones. And you want to tell me your doctor wants to somehow monkey around with that system, either to put you on an SSRI drug that will jack up your serotonin or, 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 or put you on a, a cholesterol-lowering drug that will lower your cholesterol. You can't monkey around with these systems pharmacologically. Not only is it arrogant, it's stupid. Monkeying around with your serotonin system by using SSRIs or your cholesterol system by using uh, statin drugs is a zero-win solution. And SSRIs, by the way, because they spike your serotonin, they don't necessarily help you, when your serotonin goes up really high, it doesn't necessarily help you manage things correctly, manage your day correctly, like serotonin's supposed to do. It may help you hyper-manage it. This is why road rage and uh, paranoid behavior and school shootings, mass shootings are associated with SSRI drugs. Because under conditions of super high serotonin, we become hyper-vigilant hyper uh, uh, managing we try to manage everything even if it means shooting people all right i'm pharmacist ben you're listening to the bright side our number 844-236-6010 we'll be back with more good health information and you and your phone anytime Okay, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.benfuchsarchives.com uh, and brightsideben.com. And also the longevity products are brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. Our truth treatment products are up at truthtreatments.com. Got free shipping for you for the month of December. So that, I guess that's a couple more days here. If you uh, send your order in now up till... January 1st, we'll get you free shipping on all our Truth Treatment products. Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. If you're dealing with aging skin or you don't want to be dealing with aging skin, you have dark spots or aging spots, or blemishes, acne blemishes, fine lines, wrinkles, retinol is your go-to active skin health ingredient. There is no such thing as a skin health anti-aging topical regimen that does not feature retinol, but you got to have the right... Uh, you got to have the right amount of retinol. That's why I use 5% in my retinol 5% gel. It's the e uh, equivalent of retin-A 0.05%. It's the retinol equivalent, or vitamin A equivalent, I should say, 
of retinoic acid, Dr. Strength retinoic acid. That's why I came up with 5%. Retinoic acid, of course, is really the major active ingredient for for uh, turning on collagen production and helping improve skin health. Retinol itself is turned into retinoic acid. But retinol, the knock on retinol is that it's a, a little bit aggressive on the skin, and it is somewhat aggressive. It will make your skin flake, but if you formulate your product correctly, which we've done at Truth uh, Treatments, Truth, I've been working with retinol for now for 30 plus years, you don't have to have a lot of, you don't have to have any really irritation or any inflammation from using retinol. In fact, a well-formulated product will dramatically mitigate any of the problems associated with retinol. So if you've tried to use Retin-A in the past or retinol in the past and you couldn't, but you still want to, you really need to check out our retinol 5% gel made with vitamin C, no preservatives, no fragrances, no fillers, no waxes. Like all our truth treatment products, you shouldn't have to pay for water. You shouldn't have to pay for silicon. You shouldn't have to pay for vegetable oil, you shouldn't have to pay for xanthan gum, and you shouldn't have to pay for ingredients that aren't doing anything for your skin. To me, that's just the most egregious and nastiest slap in the consumer's face that I can think of, is that a skin health company, skincare company, product, a company that makes skincare products is charging you for the water, which is 90, 80 to 90 percent of their product. I've been using truth treatments for myself personally for 30 years. That's how I've been treating my skin is with truth treatments, and I just decided that I shouldn't be the only one to have access to 100% active and functional ingredients in a product, and that's why I came out with my Truth Treatments. We have new products coming out, too, by the way, in uh, first quarter, second quarter of next year. I'm hoping to have a retinol light, 1% version. For folks who want a little daily bump of retinol, hoping to have a retinol toner, retinol cleanser, creamy cleansers, toner, uh, sprays, other, t other peel toners. All of this will be up at truthtreatments.com. Right now, we just have the four products, free shipping in the month of December. And also, we have trial sizes on our Truth Balm and Truth Serum available at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. From the Washington University School of Medicine, lack of sleep boosts levels of Alzheimer's protein. Chronic poor sleep has been linked to cognitive decline. And a new study from Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis now explains why. As the wakeful brain churns through the night, it produces more amyloid proteins. Amyloid is a, is a waste product. It's a fiber that's secreted to kind of, uh, well, it's secreted for a couple of reasons. Mostly it's secreted for protection. It has antibiotic properties. It has anti-cancer properties. It has anti-inflammatory properties. And the more waste we're producing, the more amyloid we produce. And lack of sleep causes an accumulation of waste as well as an accumulation of amyloid. Doctors today want to inject people with uh, a vaccine for amyloid. Amyloid is not a problem. Amyloid is a sign of a problem. Amyloid itself is merely a red flag. This is a classic example of how we treat the red flags, how we treat the signs, and how we treat the symptoms because we don't know what the heck to do about the disease. Well, it's simple. What you do with the disease about the disease is you keep the body from breaking down. You, you stop or slow down or reverse de generation. The body's a regenerating system, folks. If you're sick, it's degenerating faster than it's regenerating. It's in the red versus in the black. The body's like a business. In your business, you're always spending money and you're always making money. When you have a good, healthy business, you're making a lot more than you're spending. You're in the black. The body is the same way. The body's always breaking down and building up. Always breaking down and building up. When we're young, when we're strong, when we're vital, we're in the black. Our body's biochemistry is net anabolic. It's net building. We're making more money than we're spending. Somewhere around the age of maybe 35, 40, maybe earlier for some, maybe a little later for others, that starts to reverse. We start to spend more than we make, biochemically speaking. We break down faster than we build up to the point when we're elderly, when we're old and we're frail, and for some of us that starts in our 50s and 60s, we're breaking down faster than we're building up, and that, in a nutshell, is disease simplified. Net breakdown. Net catabolic. An anabolism means building. Catabolic or catabolism means breaking down. When you're strong, you're vital, you're healthy, you're building, you're net anabolic. That's what you want to be, net anabolic. When you're old and frail and sick, you're net catabolic. That's where you don't want to be. How do you take care of it? Well, you put things in the body that encourage anabolism or building, and you take things out of the body that discourage it. Or if you want to look at it the other way around, you put things in the body that decrease breakdown 
and remove things out of the body that increase breakdown. It's all about anabolism and catabolism. When we talk about nutritional supplementation, what we're talking about is giving the body, putting the bo into the body nutrients that facilitate building, facilitate anabolism. When we're talking about protein and fats and carbohydrates, we're talking about macro nutrients that provide energy to facilitate building. When we talk about removing toxicity, sugar and drugs, sugar and drugs together, that, those are the two major toxins that we ingest on a regular basis, sugar and drugs. And they're very similar, by the way. When we ingest sugar and drugs, that activates catabolism and it deactivates anabolism. Deactivation of anabolism is part of domestication. We become more like little pussycats than tigers and lions. That's why sugar costs a dollar a pound or a dollar fifty a pound and the price never goes up because there's a, a ulterior motive for, and for encouraging catabolism. It domesticates us. It makes us weak. It makes us fragile. Sugar makes us weak and fragile. Fluoride in the water makes us weak and fragile. Drugs given to us by our well-meaning doctor make us weak and fragile. Nutritional supplementation make us, makes us strong and vital. Calorie restriction makes us strong and vital. Ketogenic diet, low-carb diets makes us strong and vital. Exercise makes us strong and vital. That's what we're looking at when it comes to degenerative disease or when it comes to reducing the impact of de degenerative disease or the incidence of degenerative disease is becoming strong and vital as opposed to being weak and frail. Is it interesting at least or surprising that many of the things that are embedded into our culture, many of the rituals that are embedded into our culture, such as eating breakfast first thing in the morning, such as taking prescription drugs when you go to the doctor, or is it any surprise or is it at least interesting, if not shocking, that the memes and the belief systems and the rituals of our of our day to day life and our twenty four of our twenty uh, first century lifestyle are pro catabolic, make us weak and frail and dependent. Hmm, interesting. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. You're listening to the bright side. We'll be back right after this. Right side, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We do have lines open for you. Check out our, longe our longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Also call the phone team at 866-735-2470 if you're interested in joining me in my mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program if you're dealing with a chronic disease of any kind. And if you've never supplemented before, I can all but guarantee you 100% that you are going, going to notice results, positive results, quick results by getting on a supplement program. It's just the way the body works. The more deficient we are, the faster our body absorbs nutrients. And for many of us, we are functionally starving. We are functionally malnourished. Getting on a supplement program can make a dramatic change in your health issues if you're dealing with diabetes or Digestive health issues or autoimmune health autoimmune diseases or just plain not feeling well, getting on a supplement program can be dramatically effective. And I mean dramatically within a, a day or two for many people. You can lose weight, and especially now coming as we come into the new year, uh, as far as New Year's, resolutions go, new Year's resolutions go, if you're not on a supplement program, that should be a major uh, New Year's resolution for you. And if you're on a prescription drug, a resolution for you should be to figure out how to wean yourself off of that prescription drug. All right, got one more study here, and then we'll get your phone calls, 844-236-6010 from Nature Communications. Potassium is critical to circadian rhythms. So we see that the circadian rhythm, according to this is a, a University of Surrey and Cambridge MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, circadian rhythms, this 24-hour clock, affects how our blood cell, how our cells work in the study that use blood cells, and in the, it is the mineral potassium or it is the electrolyte that is a key player in how the body responds to day or day and night cycles. Potassium is found in veggies, and because many of us aren't eating our veggies, many of us are low potassium. You'll get potassium in abundance in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Potassium has a reputation for being an energizing electrolyte. Potassium is a uh, 
uh, held in balance with sodium. We talked about potassium a few weeks ago. Potassium is held in balance with sodium, and the more sodium you're using, and we're all getting too much sodium if we're eating, subsisting on the standard American diet, the more potassium you need. Drink your veggie juice. Best way to get your potassium is vegetables, also nutritional supplements like the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Okay. Time to hit the phones, 844-236-6010. Let's go to Minneapolis and say good morning to Ron. Hey, Ron, Ron what's up, going? buddy? Good morning, sir. Good. Yeah, I have a question. Um, since calorie restriction is good, but what if you're trying to put muscle on weight? It's great for putting on muscle calorie restriction. I'm not saying starvation, number one, and I'm not saying malnourishment, number two. We equate calories with nourishment incorrectly. Calories are not nourishment. Calorie comes from the word calor, which is Latin for heat. Calories are not, are not uh, nutritional like micronutrients are. They're the raw material. Think of a fire, right? The calories represent the heat that's coming off the fire. They represent the fire. Think of the calories as the fire. But in order to get the fire into the right chemistry to, to shunt or direct the fire into the right chemistry in the body, you need to have the micronutrients. It's the relationship or the interplay between the calories and the micronutrients nutri that are important. Just having calories without the micronutrients is not going to build you any muscle. Now, if you are trying to build muscle, you need a certain amount of calories for sure, but way less than we get. It's much better to make your calorie use more efficient by using the micronutrients. So with your calories, use micronutrition, and you won't need as many calories. You'll be getting more bang for your buck, so to speak. Does that make sense, Ron? Sure, sure. So what kind of food would you eat for that? Dense, nutrient-dense food. The best food to eat has high nutrients, micronutrients, compared to the macronutrients. Algaes, eggs, meat, fish, uh, veggies, although veggies have a lot of water, but once you take the water out, they've got a high nutritional value, nutrition to calorie value, or micronutrient to calorie value. Uh, veggies, um, mushrooms, yeast, olives, avocados. Uh, let's see what else here. I think come to mind for nutrients. Sardines. For nutri These are all foods that have lots of nutritional value compared to caloric value. I don't like making a dis distinction between calories and nutrients, but it, it's, it serves our purposes here to think of calories as just being heat, not, not nutritional, and think of micronutrients as being nutrients. We make a big mistake, and physicians do this all the time, by thinking that calories are nutrition. They're not. They're energy. But that energy has to be directed, shunted, channeled into the right biochemistry, and that's the job of the nutrients. Nutrients are these... It's really quite amazing how vitamins and minerals work. We throw the we bandy around the words micro, you know, micronutrient and vitamin and mineral all the time. But what is really happening? What's really happening is energy is being molecules are playing hot potato with energy. You ever play that game hot potato? You throw the potato around to each. You know what I'm talking about, Ron? You throw the potato around to each other, right? That's what's happening in the body with micronutrients. The energy is being bounced around from vitamin C to vitamin E to selenium to niacin to all the different vitamins. It's being passed around, and as it's being passed around, electrical uh, oh, oh, chemical reactions are being are, are harnessed or connected to that passing around of the electrical energy, and that's how biochemistry proceeds. What we call micronutrients allow the electricity to, to pass hot potato-like fashion from molecule to molecule as chemistry is happening in the body. Without okay, that, that say that again. Sorry, I have another question after you're done. Okay, go ahead. Did that make sense oh, first? Okay. Before you go, before you go ahead, did that make sense? How this whole thing works? Calories represent energy. Micronutrients channel the energy, direct the energy into the chemistry, and that's what's needed if if you're going to build. Just calories are not going to help you build. Micronutrients are required. Now, of course, just micronutrients aren't going to help you build, but you always have calories present. You don't have to worry about that as much as the vitamins and the minerals. We call that the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, your healthy start pack. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, I, I eat most of what, what you said, but I find myself I lose weight because at times I can have a, phys a physical job. Depends you got the opposite work. problem. And then, gotta... I, then, I, then I end up losing weight, but unless I eat high-calorie food, well, but what I'll kind of weight? Food. When you eat your high calorie food, what kind of weight are you all? Are you all muscly like Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of weight? What kind of weight is it? You know, weight is just this word. It it doesn't really tell us anything. Weight is. Go ahead. Sorry, 
So <laughs> I'm pretty tight. Like my BMI right now is probably, um, what, I don't know, body fat's probably like 10%. I'm Are you working out? Are you working out? I work out, yep, four days a week. Uh, well, you need yep. way more calories then. You know, I'm talking about the average sedentary person. An athlete or somebody who's working out is going to need more calories because you you're, need more energy. That's different. Right. I'm talking about the average sedentary person. Now, if you're going caloric restriction in your bodybuilding and you're losing weight, what you want to do is you want to do intermittent calorie restriction, intermittent fasting. You want, to, you want the body not to know when food is coming. That's really what you're looking for. When the body doesn't know when food is coming, you know, it's, it, sometimes it comes in, sometimes it doesn't. It kicks its its uh, building mechanisms kick in in an attempt to make it easier for you to go and forage for food. It still thinks you're on the African savanna, and when food isn't coming in regularly, the way evolution has proceeded is energy will be directed to your muscles so they can get strong, so you can go out and forage some more. So you're tricking the body into thinking that it's in this it's in this kind of starvation mode where it better make you strong so you can go find food. Problem is the way we live our lives say that never happens. Our body, we have a, a surfeit, an excess of calories. We have way too many calories, so the body's like, the body doesn't need to do anything. And the body is exquisitely economical. The brain and the body are economical in the sense they will not expend energy unless they think they have to. The brain will not expend energy unless push comes to shove. That's why people procrastinate to the last minute. The, bo the bo uh, body's the same way. It will not expend energy when there's plenty of calories around because it doesn't need to. So you've got to trick the body into thinking that it better work. That's what exercise okay. does. Exercise tricks okay, the body into thinking it better work. Go ahead. I'm, uh, we're yeah, almost out of time. Yeah, one more question. Um, yeah. Okay, it seems like when I have a lot of protein, like more than, more, believe it or not, more than like um, 80 grams a day, that yeah. doesn't seem much. But for me, then when I go urinate, it, it like stings on me. Is that it steams? You mean it, it foams? Oh yeah, there's foam. But then, like when I'm going to the bathroom, it kind of stings. S T I N. -G. Well, I don't know about the stinging, but the foam is definitely a sign that either you're not processing the protein or you're getting in way too much. So what you want to do is you want to balance out your protein to your work. The more you work, the more protein you need. And by work, I'm talking about exercise and working out. The more you're working out, the more protein you need. But if you do have foam in the urine, that's a sign that you're not processing the protein or it's coming out in your urine. It could be from too much protein or it could be a kidney issue, just a processing issue. Oh, All right, I got it. Okay. Good to talk to you, Ron. Thank you, man. Happy holidays. Okay. All right, that's all the, that's, thank you. That's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Thanks for listening. We'll continue talking about cortisol and cholesterol and domestication of humanity via ritual behaviors like taking drugs and eating lots of McDonald's and sugars. On our next Brightside episode, please check out our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com and our longevity products at brightsideben.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.